Wife is a slave. Don't slack off on housework. Pregnant with a big belly at nine months, I was pushed away by my husband, Alfred, without hesitation. It seems he's displeased with me for resting too much and not doing household chores because of my impending early delivery. I don't expect kindness from him, and I'm used to being scolded. But today, Alfred's eyes were different. Instead of enjoying harassing me, he seemed to be projecting his great anxieties. Ah, oh, just give me alcohol. Alcohol. Alfred drank voraciously, spilling liquor from the corner of his mouth. Quickly getting drunk, he fell asleep in the living room, snoring loudly. It appears I'm a slave named daughter-in-law, so I cleaned up the empty cans and covered Alfred with a blanket so he wouldn't catch a cold. Running to alcohol, how uncool. I looked down at him and quietly raised the corners of my mouth. The next morning, claiming to have caught a cold and skipping work, Alfred crawled back into bed, but I didn't let it slide. Thanks to Alfred, I can live comfortably. I always appreciate it. I patted his back, which unusually lacked confidence. A husband's duty is to earn money. Off you go to work. Who knows what will happen there? I'm Mina Yeager, 23 years old. I married Alfred, who is 12 years my senior, six months ago. Yeah, that's good. Alfred nodded contently after tasting the meal. Relieved, I let out a sigh. That's how he always praises me. Coming home tired to a tidy room, delicious food, and a beautiful Mina waiting, I'm the happiest man. I carefully do the housework so that he, who is busy, can relax a bit. It feels good to be appreciated. Mina, you're also lucky to have me as your husband, to have such an elegant wife at that age. Alfred, older than me, is dependable and always leads me. We met at a career fair while I was job hunting. Instead of getting a job, I ended up marrying him. My friends are working hard at their new jobs, so it's true that as a housewife, I live a more elegant life. He specifies the number of dishes for meals and insists on sorting laundry by color and pattern. I also attend cooking classes at Alfred's suggestion, so I don't have much spare time, but it's rewarding because Alfred acknowledges me with a smile. Ah, this meat is so good, the best. It was expensive, right? You should thank me. Alfred has always been good at studying and now works for a top-tier company. Well, I am what you'd call an elite, Alfred had said before. His slightly condescending tone, brimming with confidence, seemed cool. And now, a new life is growing inside me. I believed our home would become even happier. The distortion began around the third month of my pregnancy. One, two, three? Only three dishes? That's odd. Am I so tired that I'm seeing this? Alfred counted the dishes in an exaggerated manner. I'm sorry, I haven't been feeling well. Hmm, and? And I've started having morning sickness. I can't move as I want to, and the smell of food makes it hard to cook. Alfred listened to my story without moving a brow. I wanted him to understand my pain, but it felt like I was just making excuses. Ah, I see, he said, nodding slightly. Imagine this, Mina. We go to a restaurant. The chef says, sorry, I'm not feeling well, and only serves an appetizer. Is that acceptable? I shook my head slightly. Next, we go to a play. The leading actress says, sorry, I'm not feeling well, lies on stage without makeup, and does an act. Is that acceptable? I looked down and shook my head again. Right, it's not. That's negligence of duty. If I were a customer, I'd be furious. But what you're doing now, Mina, is just that. Alfred peered into my face, deeply bowed. Am I supposed to take care of Mina like a pet? If a housewife doesn't do housework, what's her worth? You're just planning to leech off me, aren't you? I'm sorry. My voice was barely audible as I apologized again. How ugly. Imagine how I feel, having a gloomy wife like you in front of me. And why are your lips blue? Can't you at least put on lipstick? Makeup is a woman's manners. Even as a housewife disconnected from the outside world, don't neglect that. I'm sorry. I don't know how to make him understand the pain of morning sickness. I was just managing not to vomit, with no energy to argue. All I could do was apologize. After this, Alfred changed. When he returned from work, he would sigh heavily. Wow, did you even put on makeup? Yes, maybe it's a bit light. Hmm, so your ugliness seeps through, even with makeup. You look like a tired old hag, even though you're still young. Alfred ran his finger over a shelf, blowing away the dust. Then, soon after starting his meal, he frowned, setting down his knife and fork. Tasteless. Eating while looking at your sad face makes even the finest cuisine unpalatable. 
I'd rather eat at a deli. It's a hundred times better. With that, Alfred left the house. The meal I prepared while fighting nausea was left almost untouched. Gradually, Alfred's return home shifted to late at night. He didn't want to see my ugly face, nor eat my tasteless cooking. Morning sickness means you can just laze around all day. Pregnant women are lucky. Well, I'm grateful to have to eat out because our home is so uncomfortable now, Alfred said. This wasn't the happiness I had envisioned. No matter how late it was, I always greeted Alfred when he came home. That was all I could do, so I did it desperately. Alfred wouldn't even touch my slightly swollen belly. Instead, he avoided me with a look of disgust. Welcome home. There was no reply, just a click of the tongue. He swiftly passed by, his scent provoking a strong wave of nausea. When cleaning his clothes, I tried to hold my breath. The smell was unbearably bad. I never minded Alfred's smell before. Is it the pregnancy? No, it's not just that. I picked up his suit, grimacing at the scent. From the pocket of the discarded suit, I pulled out receipts, coins, and crumpled tissues. I smoothed out the crumpled receipt. Alfred had said that deli food was better than mine, but this was a receipt from a casual French restaurant. For two? Who did he take to such a fancy place? The reliable Alfred I loved was gone, I realized. The suit carried a sweet perfume scent. I couldn't help but notice the shadow of another woman. But for the sake of me and the baby, I needed Alfred. I crumpled the receipt again. It's my fault for being cheated on. I'm the one with a gloomy face, unable to properly do housework. After giving birth, I'll be free from morning sickness and my heavy body, and I can return to my housework. And with a cute baby, Alfred's heart will surely come back to me. I just have to endure this for now. Sunday morning, Alfred woke up leisurely. Since he sat at the breakfast table for the first time in a while, I prepared breakfast. I smiled a little and handed him a plate, but he grimaced. Ugh, look at yourself in the mirror. I had already done my makeup and changed clothes. I thought maybe my mascara had smudged, but that wasn't it. No, you've gained weight. Not just your face. Your whole body shape has changed too much. <laughs> my face instantly heated up. I don't usually talk back, but this time I couldn't help it. It's because the baby in my belly is growing. No, it's not just the belly. Your whole body has become sloppy. Your backside seems to sag and your back is round. Give me a break. Your only asset was your youth, but looking like an old hag ruins that. Alfred sighed and lazily drank his coffee. Where did my young cute Mina go? Alfred scrutinized me from head to toe. Do you know why I married you, Mina? Because you were young and cute. That's it. And you were obedient and domestic. The perfect wife. But what about now? You don't do housework and you've let yourself go. It's like fraud. I opened my mouth, but no voice came out. Alfred, becoming more emboldened, berated me further. Youth fades away and I regret choosing something so fleeting. I thought Mina, who respected me, was cute at first. But I guess independence was also necessary. I once wanted to be employed and independent, but it was Alfred who strongly opposed it. You don't need to work, just marry me. At work, there are people who take maternity and parental leave. They don't whine about morning sickness, they work normally. And recently, a single mother joined. Impressive, huh? Raising a child alone. That's what being a working adult is, understand? As he spoke, nausea overwhelmed me. Unable to hold back, I rushed to the bathroom. His words pierced my back as I left. Ah, running away. Must be nice not having responsibilities as a housewife. No matter how much I vomited, the sickness didn't subside. Eventually, Alfred stood behind me. Seeing me crying and suffering, he just scoffed. Disgusting. Without Alfred, my unborn child and I couldn't survive. I had to endure. I repeated this to myself over and over. My tears wouldn't stop. Underestimating me, Alfred's attitude worsened by the day. Late night returns were still better than his repeated overnight stays without contact. Yet he'd say, even if I might not eat it, you should prepare my meal. I work hard and wear myself out at work. Don't slack off on your simple housewife duties. On such days, he'd still leave restaurant receipts for two in his suit pocket. Enjoying lovely dinners with someone else and then coming home to torment me was insane. But I couldn't live without Alfred. I chanted this unconsciously, but stopped as my belly tightened. Soon, the pain eased, and I felt a push from inside. The first kick. I, too, am becoming a parent to this child. I can't just rely on Alfred. It was the moment I felt parental responsibility. But working and becoming independent during pregnancy was difficult. 
I did housework without upsetting Alfred and took care of him when he returned, saying, Welcome back from work. With my morning sickness easing, I could manage more housework. Please enjoy your meal. Hmm, you actually made food? As a wife, that's expected. But you must be lazing around during the day. I'm working so hard. Ah, how I envy you. I wish I could be pregnant, too. Thank you for everything, I said, eyes downcast. Alfred looked down at me with satisfaction. Although he still seemed to enjoy himself outside, things were superficially peaceful. But this peace didn't last long. I developed a condition that threatened preterm labor. I avoided hospitalization, but had to rest at home, unable to even do minimal housework. I just lay there, passing my days looking at my phone or tablet. Fortunately, Alfred rarely came home, which was a relief. I even thought it was better that he didn't care about me and just enjoyed himself. However, when he did come home occasionally, he would berate me terribly. You're sleeping again? A woman who just sleeps all the time being a wife. I really drew the short straw. Just eating and sleeping? You're no different from a cow. Strange. Did I marry a cow? No matter how much he insulted me, the fact that I was just sleeping made me apologize with a sorry. If I stayed quiet, Alfred would be satisfied. But one day, that suddenly changed. It was the final day of my ninth month of pregnancy. The next day, I would reach full term and the bed rest would finally be lifted. Alfred, who unusually came home in the evening, started yelling at me as soon as he saw my face. I quickly hid the tablet I was holding in the cushion. You're slacking off again. I'm working hard outside. Ugh, it's so frustrating. He threw his bag on the floor. Startled by his yelling and the loud noise, I shrank back. Grabbing my chest, Alfred accused me. Who do you think enables you to live? I'm not working to feed a lazy person like you. I'm sorry. Thank you for everything. I managed to say with a trembling voice. What's your job? Housework? Right? Why are you sleeping? You should work properly, too. Seeing you slacking off irritates me. I'm sorry. I didn't expect any kindness from Alfred and was used to being scolded. But today's Alfred seemed different. Instead of enjoying harassing me, he appeared to be projecting his great anxieties. He looked like he was just bluffing. Don't be so spoiled. Think about your position. I was pushed to the floor. Pointing at me, he shouted. Wives are slaves. Don't slack off on housework. Unable to contain his anger, Alfred punched the wall several times. Ah, just give me alcohol. Alcohol. From the corner of his mouth, Alfred drank heavily. Soon he was snoring loudly in the living room, apparently drunk quickly. Since I'm supposedly a slave named wife, I cleaned up the empty cans and covered Alfred with a blanket to prevent him from catching a cold, running to alcohol. How uncool. Looking down at him, I quietly raised the corners of my mouth. The next morning, I woke up Alfred in time for work, but he just drank a glass of water and went back to the bedroom. Hey, Alfred, aren't you going to work? When I asked softly, Alfred just groaned. Alfred is usually good with alcohol, and last night he seemed to have fallen asleep without drinking much. He didn't look too sick for a hangover. I'm taking a day off, he mumbled into the blanket. I quickly checked his neck for a fever. No fever, huh? Shut up. I have a cold. My throat and head hurt. I'm going to have a fever soon. He shrugged off my hand and covered his head with the blanket. Okay, I'll make oatmeal then. If my husband claims to have a cold, it's my duty as a wife to make oatmeal. I quickly prepared it and offered it to Alfred. Eat this, then go to work. What? I said I'm taking the day off. He replied energetically, no, you can't. Faced with my smiling self, Alfred frowned frozen. Last night, I cleaned up the living room he had messed up, being mindful of my health. Though feeling heavy, I was working as a wife. So I wouldn't allow Alfred to skip work. I do the housework, Alfred works. Thanks to you, I can live. I always appreciate it. Alfred fell silent, looking puzzled. I patted his back, which seemed to lack his usual confidence. A husband's duty is to earn money. Then I forced him to get ready and headed to the station, pushing him onto the train. I held onto his arm to make sure we didn't get separated. Come on, we need to hurry so you're not late. What? Why are you even coming with me? You said you're feeling bad, right? I'm worried, so I'll come too. Plus, I'll do some shopping near your office. Don't mind me. I intended to make sure Alfred didn't skip work and pretend to go to the office. I'm not feeling bad anymore. You can get off the train. That's good to hear, but I said I'm going shopping right? Why go so far? You can shop near home. In the crowd, Alfred seemed too drained to yell. 
Making unnecessary detours and walking slowly, he seemed off. Despite his futile resistance, we arrived at his office. We were a bit past the start of the workday. Worried about Alfred's tardiness, a man came out to greet him at the company. Hey, Jaeger, you're late. Executive hours, huh? The man was older than Alfred. Alfred was completely cowed. The man's mouth smiled, but his eyes were sharp and intimidating. Once caught by those powerful eyes, there seemed no escape. He firmly grabbed Alfred's arm as he tried to back away. Get inside, quickly. Alfred looked terrified, as if being dragged into a den of beasts. Seeking help, he reached out to me. M Mina. Please work hard, I smiled kindly. Alfred was shaking, unsettled. Mrs. Jaeger, right? Thank you for bringing Jaeger here. We have an important discussion. Would you like to join us? Yes, of course. In the conference room, Alfred tried to make himself as small as possible in a pipe chair. The man introduced himself as Alfred's direct supervisor. There was also an older man showing clear anger and a sulking woman. Jaeger, anything to say? The supervisor asked in a low voice. Alfred looked down in silence. If Jaeger won't speak, let's talk about what we know. Despite having a family, you've been quite close with Miss Simmons from your department. Miss Simmons was the sulking woman. The company doesn't usually reprimand an employee's affair. But first, how about apologizing to Mrs. Jaeger? Alfred glanced at me, biting his lip. With pride as high as Everest, Alfred couldn't possibly apologize. Uh, an affair? What are you talking about? I have no idea. It must be a misunderstanding. <laughs> Alfred's voice was barely audible, trying to defend himself. No one believed his words. Then look at this. I presented several photos. Pictures of Alfred and Miss Simmons intimately close. What? Alfred was astonished. Looking back and forth between me and the photos, he seemed to ask how, making me almost laugh. Yesterday, everyone at work found out about your affair, right? You came home like you were fleeing. I wondered what you'd do the next day and beyond. How long were you planning to skip work with that childish lie about catching a cold? Alfred's eyes widened so much they looked like they might fall out. I was the one who reported your affair to the company. Alfred was speechless, opening and closing his mouth like a fish. Alfred was hardly ever home, and I couldn't get out of bed even if I wanted to. So I had plenty of time to sneak a look at his tablet. It took some effort to crack the password, but it turned out to be his birthday. Typical of self-loving Alfred. The tablet, synced with his mobile phone, had unlimited access to photos and messages. Completely underestimated by Alfred, I was getting the better of him, his face turning red. He spat at me, not caring that we were at his workplace. Are you kidding me? You involved the company over a mere affair? I just reported it since the other party seemed to be a colleague. And you think you'll get away with this? Now that the affair is out, I'll face a pay cut or demotion. You realize that means less income, right? Even you'll be in trouble, especially with a baby on the way. Using the child as leverage now, when he never showed interest, was despicable. But I remained calm. I acted precisely because the baby is coming soon. Wives are slaves, right? I can't imagine this moral harassment stopping once the baby is born. I don't want to raise a child in a home where it's normal for the mother to be abused. No chance a moral harasser and cheater like Alfred will change and become a good dad. We don't need a dad who's a detriment. I want a divorce before the baby is born. Alfred, rejected by a wife, no, a slave, was frozen again. I always thought Alfred was a confident and composed adult, but under pressure, he couldn't even make a decent excuse. The disparity from his usual cool demeanor was pathetic. It's only natural Mrs. Yeager would give up on you. Now, let's have our discussion. An older man spoke up. I wasn't the only one unable to forgive Alfred's slump. Why is Mr. Simmons, the COO, involved? This is overkill. Alfred muttered with a tearful, bitter expression. Mr. Simmons, the COO, was expressing an unusual amount of anger for just an employee's affair scandal. You dare to mess with my daughter. What? Alfred exclaimed in shock. After looking around, Alfred realized, Ugh! S simmons Wait! Miss Simmons' father? Yes, Mr. Simmons was the father of Alfred's affair partner. I couldn't just settle for a divorce. I reported the affair to the company. I thought Alfred deserved a pay cut or the cold shoulder from everyone. That was all I intended. But when I got Alfred's supervisor on the phone, even he sounded shaken. You're doing this with your wife in her final month of pregnancy? Mr. Simmons' angry voice echoed. With no choice but to respond, Alfred quickly apologized profusely. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. 
My daughter knew you were married and yet got involved with you. I'm deeply disappointed in her. Truly sorry for what she did to your wife. Miss Simmons, it turned out, was the single mother Alfred had once mentioned. Perhaps Alfred, fed up with me, a useless housewife, was drawn to her, managing both work and parenting. But in reality, Miss Simmons had given birth unmarried and left the child rearing to her mother while she went out. That's why Mr. Simmons had used his connections to get her a job, wanting to keep an eye on her. She was still somewhat neglectful of her child, but surprisingly, she attended work diligently, which had reassured Mr. Simmons. And to think, it was all for meeting Alfred. The thought was unbearable. I'm sorry. I've broken up with Miss Simmons. We're completely over. I'm so sorry. Alfred was just frantically apologizing. Yes, my daughter told me it's over. Mr. Simmons confirmed, gripping Alfred's head. How come scum like you with no value in passing down your genes always seem to have such strong reproductive capabilities? An apology won't cut it. You may have broken up, but your crime doesn't disappear. Uh, uh, my daughter was pregnant after all. Uh, uh, Alfred collapsed to the floor, as if his bones had turned to jelly. It's not true. There's no child. It's okay. His feeble denial only ignited Mr. Simmons' fury. Of course not, because you persuaded my daughter to have an abortion. Sorry, sorry. Alfred, receiving Mr. Simmons' punch, cried out for mercy. Even as Alfred looked up for help, Mr. Simmons was completely enraged, with the supervisor and Miss Simmons turning away. Miss Simmons had wanted to have a child with Alfred and marry him, but after being forced to abort, she came to despise him. Miss Simmons was selfish for having an affair, but Alfred, who toyed with her, was the worst. Only I met his gaze and Alfred accused me. Mina, it's cruel, too cruel. Yeah, it is cruel. Alfred is. Having accomplished my purpose, I left the conference room. Stepping into the corridor, the onlookers scattered. Seems like there had been rubberneckers. There's probably no place for Alfred in the company anymore. Alfred's screams echoed from the conference room. After that, Alfred and I divorced. I always thought about divorcing you. I just pitied you and endured. Pretending to be strong until the end, Alfred was easily divorced. And the company's decision was to fire him. He was expecting a pay cut or demotion, but the punishment was more severe. A normal person might resign after such rumors spread, but prideful Alfred clung to the top-tier company. He struggled to accept the dismissal, protesting vehemently. Actually, I had submitted various evidence to the company. Frequent messaging during work hours was just the start. Claiming to be on outside appointments, but frequently resting in hotels. Even worse, he charged those expenses to the company. There was no room for defense. After splitting with Miss Simmons and losing his job, Alfred came back to me. Despite already being divorced, I wondered what face he would show up with. Once everything was taken from me, I realized what's important. I want Mina more than status or honor. Has our child been born yet? I want to meet my child. I heard that Alfred's parents were furious with his foolish actions and had disowned him. They had looked forward to embracing their grandchild only to have their hopes shattered. A jobless middle-aged son returning home certainly wasn't a joy. It's no surprise that he wasn't even allowed to enter his parents' house. Unable to rely on his parents, Alfred moved from his expensive apartment to a cheap one. His pride hindered his re-employment efforts. He had to pay compensation to both Miss Simmons and me due to the divorce proceedings, leaving his savings nearly depleted. I felt no sympathy. Lonely enough to seek out a slave like me, that's how alone he was. My child, what are you talking about? My child never had a dad from the start. Better to proudly say, there's no dad, than have such a man claim the title. Perhaps taken aback by my firm stance, Alfred left, deflated. I'm now living with my parents. When I decided to marry Alfred, they worried about my young marriage. I insisted it would be fine, which made it harder to confide in them about Alfred. But they seemed to have anticipated my feelings. When I finally broke down and confessed about the moral harassment and affair, they comforted me as if they had always known. It must have been hard for you. I delayed mentioning divorce because I wanted to gather evidence to secure an advantageous position. My parents must have been worried sick about leaving their pregnant daughter with an abusive husband. Yet, they respected my decision and watched over me. When I was immobilized due to the threat of premature labor, my mom would come to the apartment to clean and cook for me. I think I wouldn't have been able to escape from Alfred without my parents' help. I'm sorry for always causing trouble. Feeling guilty for failing in marriage and returning home with a child, I apologized. My mother smiled gently. 
You know, taking care of a baby is hard. Diapers leak, nights are sleepless, and babies always cause trouble. But I'm happy. As a mom, you understand, right? No matter how much trouble our own child causes, it's never a burden. Mom was feeding the baby milk. Her profile was so tender. I felt like I had reverted to a child myself. As I hugged her softly, she stroked my head with the same warmth she gave the baby.